As is often the case, great adversities are usually accompanied by solutions of the same magnitude. This philosophy was adopted within the former Soviet Union, seeking to develop efficient solutions that would allow them to progress economically and militarily, given the context of having one of the most challenging geographies on the planet. By the 1960s, Soviet scientists had already thoroughly explored the possibilities of using wheeled vehicles with exceptional off-road capabilities. But these advancements were focused solely on military applications. It wasn't until November 1961 that the Council of Ministers of the USSR issued an order for the creation of an off-road vehicle to meet the needs of the Ministry of the Gas Industry, giving birth to the Zil E-167 truck. Stay tuned and discover its history. The premise under which the development of this new unit began was to achieve an off-road wheeled vehicle with multiple axles, capable of transporting personnel or cargo while also serving as a platform for special equipment. Additionally, the idea was for it to have a high cross-country capacity, mainly because it was intended to operate in hard-to-reach areas in Siberia, as well as other remote regions developed for the mining and resource exploitation industry. When this project started, the task was almost immediately delegated to the team at the Zill Special Design Bureau. Although this decision was made based on the Bureau's already prestigious reputation, it forced the engineers to work at a fast pace. As the entire team had been engaged in constant automotive development work for the Soviet Army since the late 50s, specifically with the Zill 135 units. While this reduced manufacturing times and forced the developers to almost improvise in the moment, it was put to good use, as the vast majority of the components used for this new project were taken from the newly developed Zill 135 model, as well as other already manufactured vehicles. Thus, the Zill E167 was born, a model whose letter E in the designation indicated its experimental nature. Specifically speaking, this new Zill E167 was constructed using approximately two-thirds of its components from the Zill 135 model. The remaining third consisted of parts and spare components from other projects, with the majority being completely new special developments. This was reinforced by two main factors. It was only fabricated as an experimental prototype and the urgency with which it needed to be built. To begin with, the prototype's own chassis belonged to the Zill 135, with the peculiarity that it received several structural modifications. On the structure, various cross beams and additional reinforcements were mounted to increase rigidity. Additionally, to protect the unit from external influences, steel plates were placed beneath the frame, also serving as the base. Regarding its technical qualities, this prototype integrated a power plant and transmission from the aforementioned Zill 135, as well as part of its bodywork. Meanwhile, at the rear, a pair of Zill 375 gasoline engines were installed, each with a power of 180 horsepower, each coupled to a transmission responsible for propelling the wheels of their respective sides. Alongside the engines on the sides and roof of the body, a system of large radiators was installed, driven by atmospheric air through the grills. The fuel system consisted of six tanks distributed along the sides of the chassis between the wheels with four behind the first axle and two behind the second for a total capacity of 900 liters. As expected, the construction prioritized the use of materials that ensured optimal resistance while keeping the weight to a minimum. Therefore, fiberglass was one of the most used elements in the manufacture of some of the most important parts, including the cabin, which had space for up to four crew members, and the rear body, which could accommodate up to 14 people or loads weighing up to five tons. Interestingly, fiberglass was also considered for use in the truck's wheels. As strange as this may seem, the engineers developed a wheel using steel to fabricate a space ring while implementing fiberglass for the other components. 
This made the wheels 2.5 times more lighter, also allowing the integration of Maz 529 tractor tires with a diameter of 1.7 meters. By early 1963, the prototype began testing. It stood out from the start because despite its 12-ton weight, it could reach road speeds of up to 75 kilometers per hour. Almost immediately, this truck headed to the Perm region, frequently leaving the road to test its features. During this journey, it demonstrated its ability to travel over fresh snow at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour, as well as overcome slopes of up to 42 degrees and four depths of 1.8 meters. After achieving good preliminary results and undergoing many additional tests, in early 1965, this truck was sent directly to Siberia to assist in the construction of a new gas pipeline. Located in a hard-to-reach taiga region, the Zil E167 was tasked with transporting cargo and people through fresh snow up to one meter deep. Additionally, it repeatedly performed as a tractor, pulling other vehicles out of the snow with its 10-ton winch. Its grand tour of tests and demonstrations culminated with its return to the plant where it was manufactured in Moscow. Here the collected data was analyzed to draw a conclusion about the project, which was not necessarily favorable. The scientists stated that this unit had achieved the maximum cross-country and mobility qualities for a wheeled vehicle. Although this seemed promising, it was also concluded that the mass development of these units was entirely out of the question. The main reason for this decision was the recent development of tracked solutions, specifically the Soviet GTT transporter. While this vehicle had notably inferior qualities, it became a more attractive solution due to the disadvantages of wheeled vehicles, including the complexity of manufacturing their transmissions, as well as their generally high production costs. It is said that the Ministry of Defense became very interested in the project for its potential, requesting the construction of two more prototypes for military testing. However, the construction of these vehicles never happened, and the only prototype remained stored for decades until several years ago when it was restored and displayed at the Ivanovskoye Military Technical Museum on the outskirts of Moscow.